Hello, thank you for joining Raspi PKR Tutorials. I'm Martin Parker, and in this tutorial, we're going to look at the DateTime module. Uh, it's a built in library as part of your Python installation. Uh, I'm going to use my Python IDLE shell. Uh, you can use whichever wish you wish. Um, I'm going to make this full screen, and first of all, we need to import the DateTime library. So, import DateTime. Um, and to get the functions uh, or the classes, if you do the directory of date time module, uh, it's going to return like so. Um, I'm not going to go into the time zones um, in this video. I might do that as part of a, another video. We're going to look at the time delta. Um, the time, if you're going to do anything to do with time on its own, uh, I would recommend using the time library and I have done a video on the time library um, earlier on in the playlist um, but I'm going to have a look at the date time for a few functions and the date um, so let's get cracking and if you want to look at the documentation uh, call help and then the module date time uh, and it will return with a load of lines of information um, giving you how to um, enter your code into it and how it will return etc um, but I'm not going to go into that on this video um, so feel free you know how to do it um, so check it out yourself at your own accord uh, I'm just going to bring up a fresh window and we'll get some uh, examples going so first of all I'm going to import the time uh, date time module um, let's uh, set a variable called today this is going to be equal to date time dot um, date because we're going to get the date dot uh, today and this is a function so don't forget the parenthesis brackets um, and if I call today you'll see that it's returned as a date time dot date um, and inside there is there is a tuple and it's today's date um, and it's given us the year the month and the date uh, and if I go up to my clock up here, you'll see that it's returned the, well, it's showing 14th of October 2020. Um, if we want to get just the year of today, we can do, well, call today dot year or minute or second, uh, sorry, <laughs> year or month or day, uh, and it will return uh, that. So you can set that as a variable if you wished. Um, let's set a variable called TD and we'll set that for um, date time dot date time again dot today and you'll see the difference in how we're calling this function um, and now if I call TD you'll see that it's returned with a date time dot date time whereas there we just did the date so we only got the date whereas here uh, we get the year month, date, hour, minutes, seconds and the microseconds um, and just like we did earlier if we call td dot uh, minute it will return with the minutes um, and we can do the the other ones if we wished um, so let's say um, let's have a look at uh, doing a time delta so we'll use that to find out how many days in the future um, like a week or you know to get the date um, so let's go for we'll do a week and we'll do a month um, so we'll call this week <laughs> uh, too many e's there um, and we'll set this to date time dot time delta and we'll pass in the days um, if I can uh, do my parentheses correctly uh, days equals 7 so that's how many days is in a week and we'll call this a month and we'll pass in date time dot time delta and we'll pass in days equal um, normally there's some 30 days or there's 31 days in a month I'm just going to put it as 30 days on this uh, example so if I wish to see how many days in the future um, I could get the date so day in a week so on DW 
is equal to today um, plus whoops plus <laughs> um, week and it's if I call DW there's the date um, now I didn't have to set it as a variable I could have just done it as print today plus week and it would have uh, given us that there um, if I want to have the day yeah, we'll go for the month so if we do DW dot month uh, it's returned that it still would be October um, so that is how many uh, you can use the time delta so uh, let's have a look at for a month so we'll call uh, the day in a month would be equal to in fact we won't call it as a, a variable we'll just print it out um, so we'll go um, today plus month and it will print the date and that is what it would be in a month's time so there you go um, so that's how you can use the time delta um, let's say if you want to look for a um, special day like a birthday or a Christmas there you go um, so let's call a variable for Christmas and we'll set that to date time dot date and it's asking for it's popped up there saying a year month and a day so we'll go for Christmas this year so 2020 12 for the month and the 25th which is Christmas Day and if I call Xmas it's returned that it is a date time dot date exactly how we actually set it in um, and we can just print out that date so if we print Xmas uh, it's printed out in the format how it would do it um, you can use the stream format to actually set it out a specific way that you want to do it um, but uh, we're going to leave it as is for this uh, example so if I want to see how many days is up to Christmas so I will call a variable days um, and we'll pass in Xmas is equal to um, so today whoops I should have passed in Xmas uh, minus today okay so if I call days Xmas um, it's returned as a time delta just like we use there because it's telling us how many days is there um, but if we want to just get the actual day um, then we could have just done the print Xmas minus today and it will return like so um, but as you can see it's saying 72 days like it does there um, but it's given us um, zero time because um, we're not using the time as part of it um, but if you want to just have the days value uh, then we could do the days I keep doing it wrong days xmas um, dot day and then it's returned as the just the 72 so you know there's 72 days as of today um, but there you go so if you want to look at how many days you've been alive so let's go for that um, now I'm not going to give you my full birthday um, but if I want to set a variable called me um, I'll set this to date time dot date and we'll pass in 1977 because that's the year I was born uh, I'll give you the um, fake date um, so I'll go with the 1st of June um, and if I want to uh, uh, call this days alive <laughs> um, we'll set this uh, equal to um, I don't really have to do it that way I could just print it out to be fair but we will do it this way as I've already started um, so that would be today uh, minus me um, and there we go so if I call days alive it's returned as a time delta just like we were using earlier uh, and I've been alive for 158,000 sorry <laughs> that's I'd be well old when I uh, 15,841 days um, and I can find out even more precise so if I do days alive dot and if I press the tab key you can find out 
how many days which we've just done um, you can find out how many minutes um, or seconds um, but I'm going to go for how many total seconds and this is a function so you need to put the parentheses in um, and there you go um, I have been alive for wow one point uh, over 1.3 billion seconds I've been alive um, so wow who would have thought I'd survive that long <laughs> so that's how you can find out how many seconds you've been alive um, play around with it um, put it as part of your code etc whichever um, so there we go um, if you want to find out more information on the actual date so earlier we set a uh, variable called TD let's uh, just grab that and call that again uh, and it's returned as our time and date now if I want to get the information um, I can set um, so let's say we're gonna pull it out as a list uh, well it'll actually be a tuple um, so you can't fiddle around with it um, but we'll call this um, we'll just call this T um, is equal to date time um, correctly spelled uh, dot um, date time dot time tuple and we're going to pass in the today uh, time and date and now if I call T it will give us a load of information as a time dot struct time so this is a structure now um, so I can pass in like earlier we did the um, the DW is equal to um, uh, today plus a week's time and then we called D dot month uh, etc whereas now this has been as a struct time we can now pass it as T dot and then if I want the year so I'll do um, it's popped up the uh, ma uh, the pop-up menu now but if I do TM underscore W day uh, it will return with a number two now what does that mean um, uh, you ask possibly um, the way that the weekdays start um, so if I call TD for time and dates uh, variable that we did earlier dot week day and oh, I should have passed in the parentheses on that sorry um, and it's returned with an number two again exactly the same because we're working with the same data in theory um, we just separated it out with the structure um, but the weekday um, starts on a zero um, and that would start on a Monday so Monday would be zero Tuesday would be one and Wednesday being today um, is Wednesday so number two um, but if you wanted to there is an, a different way which is called a ISO weekday uh, so if I do the same um, variable that we set so TD dot ISO week day um, and don't forget the brackets this time mine there we go it's returned as a number three and the reason for that is the ISO week day starts on a Sunday so Sunday would be zero Monday as a one Tuesday as two and Wednesday today uh, a three so there we go so there's some ways that you can play around with dates um, and look in the past and the future dates um, so have a play around with the date time library it's very useful but then again like I say if you're going to do anything with to do with times I would recommend using the actual time library um, thank you for watching and I will catch you in the next one